Hello, everyone in the his call. How are you doing? I'm happy and grateful that we can share this together. I would like to firstly Revelations chapter 1, verse 1 to 3. The revelation from Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants that must soon take place, he made room by sending his angel to his servant John, who testifies to everything he saw. That is, the word of God, the testimony of Jesus Christ. Blessed is the one who speaks aloud of this prophecy, and as for those who hear it, it takes the heart. God is raising it, and the time is near. Today, I would like to talk about the time is near, the time of the message, and I'd like to, to have this time together. The Revelation of John, as you may know, is culturally known by being written by John. And John also wrote not only uh, the Revelations, but he wrote also the, the book of John, the first, second, third letter of John as well. John, is, uh, he had a close relationship with Jesus. And well, he was always close to Jesus. He saw and heard every single word and action and he himself, in, in the Gospel of John, he writes himself in, in, about himself, right? he described the, the disciple loved by Jesus. He, he described himself as that. So he was uh, really convinced in himself that, that the fact that he was uh, loved by Jesus as a his life. And we, all, we also can understand that. By a, the fact that Jesus loved, the fact that we are loved by Jesus, that the truth that John took to himself as his own identity. And that's also really, really important for us as well. God loves you. Also, we can say as John, I'm loved by Jesus. We can declare it uh, boldly and clearly. We are loved. God loves us so much. John, he uh, wrote uh, the letters of John and also the Gospel of John in order to share this love he received from God to other people as well. In uh, John chapter 21, the 5 says this, uh, Jesus did many other things as well. If every one of them were written down, I suppose that even the whole world would not have room for the books that were written. Well, he means here that uh, he, he did so much things with Jesus that he, he wanted to say that I, there's, there was so much that I, could, I couldn't write down every single word that he did. It's impossible to write down every single thing. And right now, I believe here as, as believers of God, one thing we can understand clearly is Jesus is still working through us. That's something we have to understand. So, every single thing that God did in our lives and He's still doing in our lives is not something that we can write it down or uh, save it in any, any data bank. Because God has done it, and it is working so in our lives. So with that uh, feeling in the heart, 
that John wrote uh, this, this letter, this uh, book, I believe. First of all, one thing that we have to understand is that in the first chapter of one says this, uh, blessed is the one who reads about the word prophecy and, and take it into account. Through John, God is saying to us that we are blessed because we hear it, take it into your heart, and we actually practice it what where they're hearing from God. This word blessing, blessed, it, it used the it used the Greek word makario. If you go to uh, Psalm chapter one, verse one to two, says blessed, also the same word blessed, the one who does not walk in the step of the wicked and obey that sinner stake or sit in the company of others but whose delight in all the world meditates on his law day and night. God is saying, what kind of person is blessed then? Then here he describes in the Psalms, what kind of person is the blessed? The ones who are not walking step of wicked, stayed away from the sinners. In other words, when we uh, hear, listen to the words and try to practice what is teaching us, and we put our heart in it, it means this kind of person, it says here in Psalms, this delight of this person is in the lot of the world. It states in it. They also in Revelations 1, it says about the person who hears it and also take it to heart. What is it? This person is blessed. Have the blessing. John writes it uh, with the revelation. There are some uh, pastor that says that when he wrote, uh, when he heard uh, everyone who hears the word of uh, rev revelated from God, put it, take it into heart. They, this person is truly blessed. Only listen, but also uh, follow the guidance of the God or, or uh, it's written here, take into heart. This person is truly blessed. We received the blessing from God. Also, this, we, we try to live our life following this word, and we are receiving the guidance from God. So we need to check if we are really doing it. There was a pastor uh, who is still working uh, in the gospel. He did a lot of things. And this pastor said that she still wrote a lot of uh, books uh, related to this revelation. And about this, this verse, she says that the person who listens to and also uh, read it, uh, this Bible works, even though they don't understand the meaning, but they still have them in their heart that they want to know more. This verse has. Uh, a bless God. It's when, sometimes when, when you read the revelation specifically, it's difficult to understand. So uh, we uh, sometimes we don't understand, but still we read it, right? There are so many people who read it, okay? but still, but even though you don't understand every single thing, but you still feel like, oh, I want to read it. I want to learn more. That's that when, when, when you have this uh, thirst for God's word, it's, it's really a blessing. And that's also given by God. And, and the Bible says that this kind of person who really wants to know more about God and what his word is really blessed. 
In Revelations, actually, uh, it appears there's a word blessed seven times throughout the Revelation. And I would like you to distract from the word that God's heart is in God's heart. What is the blessing that we have received? Uh, we have received Him through uh, the Bible. Jesus also uh, spoke about this blessed be the one. If you go to Matthew, you can see the term on the mountain that it is uh, the, the blessing. To, uh, the blessing to pray. It says, blessed is this person, blessed is this word, blessed is those who because this kind of person will have. This, this blessing come from when we read the Bible and listen and take into practice what we read to learn we first and we can receive that we are being also, John goes further, and after the, the, uh, the Bible, uh, the verse 1 to 3, that we read, he also uh, writes down about our identity in Revelations 1, chapter, uh, chapter 1, verse 5 to 6. And from Jesus Christ, who is a faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and has made us be a kingdom and priests to serve his God and Father. To him be the glory and the power for ever. Amen. For us, God has given this identity. What kind of person we are? There are four points that you can take it from this. First, we are loved. We were redeemed, we are freed from sin. We were made a kingdom and also we became priests. We are loved, we were freed from our sin. And that's uh, how it's written here. If we go to Isaiah 43, verse 4, it is a Bible verse that everyone knows, right? Since you are precious and honored in my sight, and because I love you. I love you. God says this word to us. He is speaking. He made us target of his love. We are loved. Yes, you are loved by God. John, he writes down about it in the first letter of John chapter 4, verse 10. This is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice, atoning sacrifice for our sins. It's truly uh, that it's not that we uh, love God and that's why God loves us. This is the three or mouth. God loves us first. He gave us his hands of love and he uh, covers us with his love. We are loved by God and we live in his love. And throughout the Bible, we can see this, that how much we are being loved by God. And John wanted to focus on that simply and boldly that we are God loved. It's not only that. We are also free from our sins. Jesus came to, uh, to free us from our sins. And that's also a uh, evidence, an evidence of his love. Right? Paul 
In Romans uh, chapter 6, 22 says this, When now that you've been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the benefit you reap leads to hope and the result is life. God loves us. He used his son for and freed us from our sins. So now we are not the slaves of sins and Paul says also a really important thing that we are freed from our sins. Now we become slaves of God. Now we are living because of God's grace. That's what he's, he means here. We are people of God. We are living because we're so, uh, uh, in other Bible verse, Paul says, it's not me living anymore. God, Christ lives in me. I live in eternal life. That's what he, he, he as, as he said in this Bible. This is unchangeable truth that we are loved by God's love that uh, real. Uh, comes back to reality in our lives. We did not, we are not worthy of the salvation. We didn't do something really good that God was really happy, so that's why he loves us. In Isaiah 63, uh, verse 9 says this, Isaiah 63, 9 says, In all the stress, was, uh, he too was destroyed, and the angel was asleep them. In his love, first, he redeemed them. He lifted them up and carried them all the day. So when we are in distress, God also. If you we say like Japanese people, it's 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 a really uh, a word that we're really really thankful for, right? Sometimes we feel like you're forsaken. We feel like God, where are you? Where did you go? Especially when we feel we are in suffering, we feel that way. When, when, when you don't feel like you're going well, when you're blue or something, sometimes you feel like we were left behind. But I, in Isaiah 63 says, in their distress, he was, he too was distressed. In other words, when we are suffering, God is, uh, he doesn't ever forsake us. He's always with us. He's, he suffers it with us. He feels our pain. And he takes our pain into him. He understands us and he receives us exactly the way we are. And this God, he's with us. It says here that the angel of received them in and this is a, a beautiful word putting here that God is with us, but He's not only there, He also gives us the salvation. It's like our protective angel is there all the time with us, protecting us from evil uh, and protecting us from damage. God's presence is there with us. And that's our safe, our, our uh, salvation. That's what the Bible says. Mercy and love was uh, and in His love and mercy, He redeemed them. And he lifted them up and carried them. He freed us from the sin. He freed us from the death. And Isaiah says this too. He lifted them up and carried them all, all the days of old. Sometimes we feel like we have to do our best and strive for ourselves. But God says to us, He is carrying us on his back. He, he is guiding us. Even though we feel like sometimes we have to do in our thoughts we thought of, we cannot forget this truth. Amen. Also, 
John, he speaks about、uh, sorry, Peter says in 1 Peter 2、uh, 9 that we were chosen for the priesthood, and then John uses、uh, this reference of priesthood. He linked the letter of Peter into what、uh, he was saying. We were made a kingdom, and we are also named. Into priest. What does it mean? When the Israelites were、uh, delivered from,、uh, from the Egypt, they、uh, received a new identity from God. And in Egypt, in Exodus 9 10,、uh, Uh, to six says, Now, if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all the nations, be my treasure possession. Although the whole earth is mine, you will be my kingdom of priests and all nations. As the Israelite was that on that side of God. We are also choosing at, chosen as God's people, as His King. And we can be thankful and grateful for that. Amen. Why? Why can we? Why can we、uh, read and listen? And, and why do we need to、uh, listen and meditate to this word that, as it says in the Revelations? The answer to, us, to it is in Revelation 22, verse 7. Oh, sorry. In the first verse that we read, that the time is near. In other words, our Savior is coming back. The second coming is, is near. The time is near. And、uh, in the very beginning, when we read the Revelation,、uh, if you go、uh, in the first、uh, chapter of Revelation and read through first verse to eight, you can see the several times it says that God is here and He's coming back and He's coming in. Like he's, and that's a word that、uh, in, in the original verse is not saying that he is coming. It says he, he, he's coming anytime. What it means, it says in, in the original, it goes in the original, it says like, We are, all, we are already listening to his footsteps, that he's so near, he's so close, he's right around the corner. And that we cannot forget this truth in our daily life. That's how we can always be.、Uh, Keep in mind that God is right around the corner. He's, he's there. He's coming. He's, the, the second coming is near. And we can live our lives with that through. And he's, he, it's not only that, but He's always、uh, in our daily lives. He's guiding us, He's covering us, He's holding us in His arms. Peter says this in 1 Peter、uh, chapter 4, verse 4. Uh, seven says the end of all things is near. Therefore, be alert, alert and of sober mind so that you think. If you read through Revelation, you'll see that it says about the end of times. Sometimes we,、uh, human beings, I believe many,、uh, many people will, will think, like, well, okay, but when is t going to happen? And, and our focus usually,、uh, our curiosity goes to when it's going to happen.、Right? I believe there are several ways to read、uh, through Revelations, but it, 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 you can read as、uh, it's a new genre, or、uh, it's just something like that. 
Not being uh, shaken by the things that is happening, or be afraid, or 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 becoming so panicked that oh God is is coming. So I mean, not that that what God wants us to do is for us to stay there. To pray is not for you to just to say a list of things that you want. It's to listen His words. To, to receive this words and guidance he's saying, and then put into practice what uh, is to say. So Second uh, Peter chapter 3 now says this, the Lord is not slow in keeping his promise as some understand slowness. Instead, be he is patient with you. He's patient, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repent. God is patiently waiting for us. For us, He's giving a preparation time. And we are really, really thankful glad that God is giving us in this time of mercy so that no one will perish and everything will be have the time to God is giving us this inspiration time so that we can share the word to those unknown. What is God? What is God? Speaking to us, what is uh, God uh, teaching us? What He wants us to do? What is His uh, in, in His heart? That's uh, what we we need to be keep uh, sensible, sensible. And the word, the key word here, is he's coming, or the time is near. In John, in the Revelation of John 22, 7 says, Look, I'm coming soon. Blessed be the one who keeps the word of the prophecy. We are living in the blessing. In the key word here, the time is near. So we can have and receive this, this word if the time is near and open our hearts and be more sensitive to what he has, to his guidance. Because it's the time is near, God is willing to use you for That's the thing. And I would like to encourage you to uh, be more and more uh, sensitive to hear what God is uh, willing to work through you. Right. Lord, thank you for uh, using us. Lord, please help us to listen, to uh, meditate, to take into heart. May we stay always in practice in your presence. Thankful for, you, for this opportunity you've been done, given to us. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Let's have an, uh, another time of prayer to remember the words of the Bible verse we read, the study we just. Uh, went through and let's let's have a, a time of prayer
be met. The scripture says, uh, today you read through Revelations, but at the very end of the Bible, was, what is it written in the very last verse of the Bible? If you go through the last chapter of the scripture, you will see that it it ends with love. To love to the very We are living exactly in this time that it's written in the revelation. That's why we are blessed. Jesus second coming is real. today maybe maybe we, we would feel like a little off but I, I really want you to understand that Jesus is not coming to judge he is because he love us and I really want you to remember this Jesus came to save humanity. That's why he's taking a little more time to come because he wants everyone to be saved. And I want us to receive this truth again. Truly, that we may receive this unconditional love. If you feel like the love of God is too far away, or or you feel like God loves, God's love changes according to your condition, I really want you to lift your God's love is not conditional to your condition. It doesn't matter if you are in sin. It doesn't matter if you are in, in rebellion. God still loves you. And this merciful God, Father God, He has a deep love for you and I want you to receive it. Let's go back to God and receive honestly this unconditional If that's what you desire, please lift your hand. Please raise your hand. Thank you very much. Says, this is love, not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son in atonement sacrifice for us. Thank you, Lord, for loving Him. Thank you for being uh, for forgiving our sins, even though we were in rebellion and we are. Lord, please forgive me. And still, even though you knew who I was, Lord, thank you for never forsaking me, forgetting me, abandoning me. Thank you so much, Jesus. This love. We're today listening about this. So uh, I pray that every single person here listening about it may receive it. And we truly, deeply believe in the God of the Holy Spirit. Please work in us. If you don't work in us, we can't do anything. We don't. Uh, 
get to know you more because of our efforts, but it's true the Holy Spirit. Lord, please touch in our hearts and heal us. May the healing from the cross be received in our Jesus, you're the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Never change. We are really grateful for you, Jesus. Thank you so much. May we overflow in this and all this. So may we be uh, able to share this love with others. In this uh, week, uh, we might uh, find people who are looking for, who is in need of this love. Oh, Lord, and when we meet this, this people, that we have uh, get this opportunity to share your love. Please open our eyes to see this opportunity. Please use, please use the church, Jesus. Lord, please add the people who will be joining us. In Jesus' name, we pray and we thankful for this amazing service. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Let's uh, read in the declaration. First in Japanese, yes, I'm all the I Now in English, dear Jesus, thank you for loving me, come into my heart, and lead my life. Jesus is my Lord. Amen. Amen. A great uh, applause. 